Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not quite the uh, head of the Anglican Church in Australia. <laughs> um, my name is Brian Medway and I, uh, I come here in a different uh, kind of connection because uh, it's true, I am the pastor of a, lo- a church in Canberra, Australia and the leader of a network of churches in Australia. But, <coughs> um, and even though we, uh, along with Peter and others, lobby the uh, members of the Australian Parliament on behalf of issues to do with uh, the injustice uh, in, uh, in Iran and support for the uh, Mujahideen and, uh, and Ashraf. We've been doing that uh, for a long time now. Um, but but I, j- I just need to tell you a story because uh, this story began for me in a very unusual way because in 1993, in April I think it was, uh, was it 93? 92. Well, I'm an old man now, so I can't remember. But um, in 1992, in April, uh, uh, 11 Iranian supporters of democracy in Iran and supporters of Ashraf uh, came to Canberra to do, uh, to do a protest at the embassy, the Iranian embassy in Canberra. Um, they came from Sydney, which is uh, 300 kilometres away, and, uh, and they came to protest about uh, a news report they'd heard about uh, uh, an attack on Camp Ashraf in, ba- in, ba- in, in Iraq. And um, so they went to the uh, embassy. When they got to the embassy, they saw inside of the embassy uh, uh, MOIS uh, agents there who had been their torturers in Iran. And so at the same time, the gate of the embassy opened and they went in and caused some damage. And uh, so they were arrested uh, by the uh, police of the Australian Capital Territory. And a few weeks after that, um, I was sitting in my office and I got a phone call from the, one of the welfare agencies in Canberra to say that 11 people were coming to Canberra uh, to go to a court case that would take some time and could we provide accommodation for them. Um, uh, I said I was happy uh, to do that and... Uh, uh, and then, and he didn't say who they were, but then there was a pause on the phone and he said, I better tell you who they are. And these were his exact words. He said, they are the 11 Iranian terrorists. And I thought, oh, uh, we've, never, we've never had Iranian terrorists as, uh, in, our, in our home and in our place. Uh, but, um, of course, he was just using the uh, the news reports that had been going around our city. So uh, in a few weeks' time, we met up with 11 people and a few others from Sydney, and this began a relationship with those people which I can say to you, within a very short space of time, we belong to them. We belong to what they represented. And here is a person who had no understanding of anything that was going on in Iran and all those other things, uh, but through the integrity, the commitment, the love the uh, acceptance uh, of those people, we spent the next 12 months uh, getting to know one another and getting to serve this cause which you now represent. Uh, in, tho- in those days, we... <laughs> and, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think about that as anything uh, amazing because I want to say to you, your integrity, your commitment, your willingness to serve a goal... Uh, to serve the best interests of the people in Iran and your commitment to do that without any qualification, without any idea of how long this might take, your, your commitment to that, it just simply draws our affection. It draws our trust and it builds a bond that goes across every kind of barrier just to say, we want to see what you want to see. And I need to say to you today that those we represent in Australia... We will make your voice known and continue to do that in the best way we possibly know how and we will do it with the greatest of confidence. We will do it with a a very complete conviction. And you know, uh, I've decided that I'm an honorary member of Asherah. I've appointed myself. Because I belong to what you believe in and I belong to you and we do this uh, and we want to make this count in a small way so that when Iran is free, we will be part of this great story. Thank you.